He never rejected the family military tradition, but he would follow it on his own terms. His sense of independence and uh, his feeling that he had no choice but to be there, I think, uh, caused him to rebel a little bit. My company officer would have predicted uh, that I would be on probation rather than in the United States Senate. At the Naval Academy at Annapolis, McCain was easily distracted. We liked to hang around with him because he was popular, he knew a lot of pretty girls, and he was a lot of fun to party with. Those distractions nearly torpedoed McCain's naval career. During his junior year, McCain flunked an exam and had just one chance left to stay at Annapolis. But instead of studying, he went to another party. We got back to the Naval Academy about 6 o'clock in the morning. He hadn't slept, of course. So he showered and shaved and got into his uniform, went over to the academic board. When it was his turn to go before the board, the commander came out to get him, and he was sound asleep. <laughs> Somehow, McCain convinced them he should stay. Then, nearly a decade later, he was shot down, taken prisoner in Vietnam. The ordeal gave the young man a purpose. They tried to teach me at the Naval Academy. You know, when I found him in prison, I was dependent on others. I was dependent on tapping on the wall to my fellow prisoners and help to sustain them, but more importantly, they sustained me. And we then became part of a cause. To keep up spirits, McCain told jokes, even recited full movies. At one point, he taught literature classes from memory. Our grandest performance was a reasonable facsimile of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And McCain played uh, Scrooge, naturally. We had no materials, but we, we, we stole cotton from the medic and made John some little lamb chop, you know, sideburns and everything. And uh, it, was, it was a great morale boost. Just after returning from Vietnam, McCain wrote about his time as a POW. I had a lot of time to think over there, he said, and came to the conclusion that one of the most important things in life, along with a man's family, is to make some contribution to his country. But that contribution... In this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. ...would put John McCain in a place he says was even worse you, than five and a half years of hell as a POW. I do. It was in 1989 when he was at the center of a massive political scandal. He felt that his honor really was at stake, that um, the, the Vietnamese didn't hurt him as much as uh, people acting not out of principle but out of politics. McCain and four other senators became infamously known as the Keating Five for their connection to this man, Charles Keating, a developer and a major political donor. He was under federal investigation for his role in the savings and loan collapse, and McCain and the other senators face accusations of corruption for trying to influence the investigation by meeting with regulators, including William Black. No U.S. senator with the financial pressures they're under to raise massive amounts of contributions is going to lightly turn their back on their largest political contributor. Largest and one of his first and most loyal backers. Keating was there for McCain Fire since McCain. his first campaign. John McCain for Congress. New leadership for Arizona. McCain won, but of course, he wasn't new to Washington. He'd spent time there as a child and in 1977 was appointed naval liaison to the Senate. In 1986, McCain made the move from the House to the Senate and began a quick rise in Washington and within the party. He was even rumored to be on the short list of VP candidates for George H. Bush's 1988 White House bid. But as quickly as McCain's star rose, it crashed when he became one of the Keating Five. Suddenly, he was connected to the big money and backroom politics many voters despised. We were extraordinarily nervous because five U.S. Senators, one twentieth of the U.S. Senate, were meeting with us uh, personally uh, to put pressure on us. Those meetings led to the suspicions of corruption and humiliating hearings before the Senate Ethics Committee. He said, this is the worst thing that ever happened to me. And I thought, well, obviously not a very good thing, but it doesn't seem to me quite matches up with five and a half years in a North Vietnamese prison. He said, no, this is worse. It wasn't just substantial campaign contributions binding McCain to Keating. It was also personal. Their families vacationed together, sometimes flying on Keating's own jet. McCain's wife and father-in-law 
even invested in one of Keating's shopping developments. Cindy McCain has said her addiction to prescription drugs, made public in the early 90s, was partially due to the stress of the Keating Five affair. As for that affair, McCain maintained any appearance of wrongdoing was deceiving. I'm fully satisfied that my conduct at all times was conducted in keeping with the standards of my office. Finally, the Ethics Committee found McCain used, quote, poor judgment. John came close um, to uh, absolutely uh, walking away from the Senate. Instead, McCain became a crusader for campaign finance reform and more transparency. Not everyone agrees his intentions were pure. Uh, the charitable uh, explanation is that his idea about campaign finance was this. He, he felt uh, chastened. He felt his own honor questioned. This whole exercise was a way to, uh, to address that honor question.